with the Grand Prairie Gun Club and I'd like to take some time and talk about our rifle range and talk about some of the do's and don'ts and rules for using it and make it easy and safe for everybody. Um, I'd like to point out that we always want the muzzle pointed downrange at the berm in a safe direction. That's one of the most critical aspects of using any firearms range, pistol or rifle, but in this case, because it is a 200 yard range and there's so much chance for error, I, we just have to have you point that downrange at the berm. Number two, and it's something that isn't necessarily intuitive unless you're a big time shooter, but you definitely want to keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to pull the trigger, and of course you'd only do that when the range is hot. And you'll see each one of these open the action um, and the firearm unloaded except when shooting. Uh, know your firearm and ammunition. And the reason that's important is we now have so many different guns available. People shoot ARs. Uh, some are basically 5.56, some are 308 caliber or larger. So you want to make sure that your ammunition matches your gun. And one of the ways that we manage that is you shoot and fire one type of gun at a time. I know you're going to bring several and that's perfectly fine. We have benches that are set up for loading and unloading. Two of them that are 20 feet long on the east and west side of the range. That's where we'd like you to unload uh, your truck or car with your weapons, keep them there, and then bring the firearm and ammunition you're going to shoot to the bench when you're ready to shoot. Now one of the things too, and we talk about this, but you have to shoot the berm. The supports and the poles are not targets, and we want to avoid shooting them if at all possible. And to do that, you have to shoot at our dirt berm. It's 200 yards down. It's very obvious, but you want to make sure you don't cross shoot your lane or shoot any pole or have any target attached to anything except the target frames. Hearing protection, and part of the reason I'm probably talking too loud, is on this range, it's a requirement that you have hearing protection and eye protection. There are some cases when you're using a scope or something, you want to lift your glasses up to see through it. So you're really smart to use hearing, uh, eye protection along with your hearing protection. One thing that we want to talk about are the range hours. It's 0830 till official sunset. In the bulletin board area, just to the east of our shooting pavilion, are the official sunset times. Remember our shooting time, 0830 till official sunset, and that's an agreement we made with the Grand Prairie um, City Government. So right here, I posted a list for 2015 of sunset. Every year we'll have um, a similar posting that shows when official sunset is. Again, don't be confused, it's not official darkness. It'll still be light when it's sunset. So we just aren't allowed to shoot past that. So thank you very much. Uh, at Grand Prairie Rifle Range, we ask that you sign in when you arrive and sign out when you leave. It's important for us to know who's using the range and from a safety perspective and from a usage perspective. I'd like to talk about our loading and unloading benches. This is where we'd like you guys, when you get your rifles and gear and scope sights and all that gear, ammunition out, put them here. Don't use all the benches to store your weapons and ammunition and paraphernalia. Just use one rifle and one set of ammunition for your bench. Now one thing that you need to note is we have a red light that we turn on when the range is made in safe condition. There's a red line that runs from bench one through bench 12 behind it that you cannot cross to touch your gun or the bench under any circumstances when the range is made safe. It's made safe so that people can go down and retrieve targets or place targets or go down range for some reason but under no circumstances cross the lane, under no circumstances leave a gun with the breech closed or ammunition in it or in a ready fire condition under any circumstances. So we have a switch, it's located on the east side and a switch located on the west side for you to turn that light on. One other thing, anytime you feel like the range is unsafe or somebody's doing something unsafe, call for it to be made safe. Step back in a loud voice, let everybody know that we need to stop, cease firing so that we can make the range safe and resolve any issues. This is the switch on the um, west side of our pavilion. This turns on and off the red light. We have three red lights and a, well, the middle one is a beacon and the two end lights are red lights. We have one down here, follow me. We have a red line right here in the middle that we don't want people crossing 
while we're in safe mode. So you don't cross over, you don't do anything, you can only go downrange in order to place targets, get them up, or do something downrange. But our east side, our east side um, switch is right here. So right in this mechanism, you can turn on or off the lights. I'm leaving it on safe while we make this film so that people out here that are or could or would want to use the range realize that they can't approach their benches. Very important that we note this red line. There's one thing that's been asked about on many occasions and that's how or can we shoot prone sitting, standing, or kneeling. And yes we can at the Grand Prairie Gun Club, but we require that you not shoot below the elevation of the top of the bench. And the reason for that is the angle of our baffles and our berm at the 200 yards is designed to catch your bullets shooting at an, air, at an angle or an area about bench high. And for that end, we've created a, um, a shooting platform that anybody can use. They just snap it over the top of the bench. It's got hooks on the front and hooks on the bottom. It's very stable. All you have to do to get on it is get on it, roll over, and you're ready to shoot prone. Ooh, this is going to allow us to have NRA style competitions which will require prone, standing, um, sitting and kneeling positions in order to complete the competition. This is our uh, prone shooting bench uh, platform and we use it to snap over the top of our bench in order to allow a member to shoot prone or sitting on our range. We can use this platform that we created and um, it's available to all our members. Let me show you how it works, real simple. You can see this fits in the uh, area where the chair goes. These two snap over the end to keep it from tilting back. Just goes up. The end there, line it up, pull it back. Now, it's safe, it won't tilt back, it won't slide forward or pull back. Okay guys, one of the things we have to talk about is we've arranged each shooting lane to line up with each shooting bench. We have 12 shooting benches. Each bench has a 50 yard, 100 and 200 yard range that you can shoot. There's a target holder at each one of those distances. If you look, this is station eight. If you look right here, eight, the bollard down there lines up with eight. That's the 50 yard. The 100 is right over the first steel baffle and 200 is against the back burn. There's markers on each one of those um, target holders that match up with position eight. We require that you shoot within your lane. Do not cross shoot. It's caused us uh, trouble in the past and it causes damage to our baffle supports as well as possibly allow rounds to leave the range, which we really can't afford. So stay in your lane and each one of these, 1 through 12, has these lane markers and they're lined up specifically for the specific bench. Standing, obviously, you want to stand inside the shooting area to shoot if you're standing. And if you're kneeling, you want to kneel inside there as well. Don't step to the side of your benches. You have to be lined up on your target lane. One of the things we want to talk about is correctly mounting a target to the frame. We don't want to staple it to the wood because it causes you know, staples and nails to stick out and they cut people's hands. They also damage the wood even more than hitting them with bullets do. And so when we, when we mount them, I use a staple gun and I use a target that just fits inside. You want to staple it on the insert. Real simple, real easy and ready to go. So we're going to do it this way. It's ready to go. And you can see that the target's ready. It's up. I just carry it down to 50, 100, or 200 yards and slot it in to the appropriate lane um, frame that we have built. This way it's done correctly. You can go ahead and shoot safely. Let's talk about the electrical for the uh, rifle and pistol pavilions. This is the electrical box for them. We want it left in the on position. That allows 
the safety lights, the red lights to come on, and the power points to uh, work correctly. If there's a problem or an issue, you just turn it down, turns it off. But in most cases, most of the time, we want to leave it in the on position.